When Natalie was in grade one, she wrote a short essay all about the importance of vision and eye health. My eyes are special. I will protect them and I will be careful and I will get them checked. I will not throw rocks. <laughs> I will not poke sharp sticks in my eyes. That's Natalie with some very good advice for anybody with eyes. I'm Dan Meisner, and this, this right now is Grown Ups Three Things They Wrote as Kids. How are you doing tonight? It's very, very nice to see you. This is a show where we go back in time to remember the good, the bad, and the awkward parts of growing up. This time, recorded live at the Royal Cinema in Toronto, we have a first kiss, a guilt trip, a pair of twins with the same first name, and much more. This stuff is weird, it is wonderful, and, like Natalie's essay, it's full of very useful life advice. So think about who you were when you were a kid, and stick around. When Michelle was 11, just about to turn 12, she really wanted to go to a New Year's party and to a movie with a boy. And in an effort to make these things happen, she wrote two letters to her parents, and we're going to hear those letters right now. Please welcome Michelle to our stage. December 31st, 1986. What is New Year's Eve? New Year's Eve is the night before the beginning of a new year. It is a time to be happy and a time to celebrate. People look forward to this time of happiness. On this joyous night, people of all ages, especially the preteen ages, <laughs> 11 to 13, should not be home and doing things around the house like babysitting. But if they have to, they should get paid three fifty an hour. <laughs> also, they should be allowed to be with friends because what better way is there to spend New Year's Eve than with a friend? Only mean and cruel parents would make their eldest and maturest daughter stay home with their youngest and immaturest daughter. <laughs> you? No, or would you? What a great way to start a year. Ha, ha. It is not fair that Christy, Laura, Aviva, Lanny, Dana, Heidi, and Andrea are all sleeping out and partying. I have to stay home. Meanwhile, you, my parents, are at the Goldbergs partying, <laughs> having fun. That is like me making you stay home on this joyous occasion. And, oh no, babysitting. Think about it, you hypocrites. <laughs> if you really don't want to stretch your own time a bit, then why did you have children? <laughs> if you're so worried about paying a babysitter, I'll pay. Heather or someone must be home. Or have her sleep at the bills. That way you don't have to worry about either of us. Don't come home till 6 o'clock. I won't care if I'm at Aviva's. Besides... If I can't sleep over and Aviva's alone with her parents and a bunch of grade nines, her brother's having a party, <laughs> if I'm there, we'll be together alone and not bored. But if you don't let me go, you are ruining my holiday and Aviva's. Thanks a lot, Michelle Fagan. P.S. Don't get the wrong idea. This letter is not to make you feel guilty for ruining my New Year's. <laughs> Have... <laughs> Have a great time at your party. I know I'll enjoy the TV. <laughs> Guilt trip letter number two. Three pages. January 2nd, 1987. Daddy and Mommy. Okay, you've ruined my New Year's Eve. Are you glad? <laughs> I've sort of gotten over that because if I wasn't at home, I wouldn't be going out with David. <laughs> but now... You're trying to ruin that, too. You guys are trying to kill my social life with both the boys and the girls. It's a PG movie. He won't try anything at all. <laughs> I won't let him. He even said so himself. I hardly know him. 
If I go to the movie with him, I learn if I should continue going with him or not. Besides, and he said this too, what's the use in going out if I won't be able to go out? (laughs) When you said, I do, to daddy or vice versa, did you intend to only talk on the phone? (laughs) Never see him? Just because maybe you two didn't have such a great social life till about age 16 (laughs) does not mean that I'm not entitled to one at almost age 12. (laughs) Huh? This is the 80s, not the 30s. (laughs) Oh, sorry, I forgot. You're not from that year. You're sure acting like it, (laughs) old-fashioned. Oh, for goodness sakes, it's not as if I'm going to a movie, not a date, with a 16-year-old rebel who shoplifts and wears a black leather jacket with a skeleton on back and drives a Yamaha-ha-ha-ha-ha. <laughs> no. Instead, your almost 12-year-old wonderful daughter is going with a cute 12-year-old from a good family. <laughs> He's a genius who goes to Upper Canada College. <laughs> And does seven, eight, nine, ten grades of work. Also, he is a good kind of clean cut guy. (laughs) He doesn't do drugs or smoke or even ride a motorcycle, nor does he wear a leather jacket, let alone with a skeleton. (laughs) Don't you trust me? I'd be back by 3.30 or 4 o'clock or earlier. I would take the bus on steals a few stops, and I won't even cross at the crosswalk because I don't know how. (laughs) And I know how to get home since I've done it twice. Gosh, I could walk there. Let me tell you something. I could easily have said, I'm going with Emily or someone and meet him there, but no. I told you, I'm going to a movie with David. Can I? Whatever. You didn't take any of what this stupid letter says into consideration. Thanks a lot, Michelle. P.S. Please give this a great deal of thought. It means a lot to me, your trust and your permission. (laughs) P.P.S. I write it down because it's easier, you know what I mean, for me than talking. You always interrupt me, Mom. Oh, yeah, I can't really say all this to Dad. I didn't ask him yet. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. In case you're wondering, I checked with Michelle, and no, her parents did not let her go to the movie. Does anybody in the room remember their first kiss? <laughs> Amelia may not remember her first kiss, but she has it documented. We are going to hear a diary entry from seventh grade. This is a private diary all about her first kiss. Please welcome Amelia to our stage. A quick heads up, Amelia uses some cuss words in her diary, which we do not bleep. Dear Diary, today was an okay day. I've had better. Today was Remembrance Day. And yeah, we prayed. (laughs) I mean, I thought it was pretty cold out, so my ass was a bit frozen. I really like my friends in grade eight. I know that I should be with the grade sevens more, but I just want to have fun. (laughs) I'm afraid I may lose my friends and I may be a loner next year. Oh well. Today, Angelo and I kissed the longest and saliva-ished yet. It was like his lips were more on my mouth and his spit was slobbering it and it was like four seconds full. Which I find pretty long for a 12-year-old girl. He's really hot and all and we don't talk much. We only want each other for the kissing. It really bothers me that he's about 16 months older than me. And I feel like I'm not good enough for him, but I really do think I love him, and he's my first real boyfriend. And I count real boyfriends only if you kiss, which we do. (laughs) He gave me my first kiss. It was a Tuesday. Tuesday, October 11th, exactly a month ago, and it didn't exactly turn out too great. We were walking home, and he was making it obvious that he wanted to kiss, and I didn't want to do it in the middle of nowhere. 
So I took him in between my house and my neighbors, and I sort of just opened my mouth, and I st- <laughs> <laughs> and I stuck my tongue out just like I saw in the "She Will Be Loved" music video by Maroon Five. <laughs> Yep. Um, And then I bit him. (laughs) Talk about embarrassing. It was all I thought about. And then I just laughed it off. Whatever. Now I got better at it. Um, Yeah, well, that's my first kiss. Oh, well. Uh, We'll see how things go. I'm doing pretty good at school. Other than Miss M is a whore. (laughs) She has favorites and I'm not one of them. Yeah, my mom came back, and I'm pretty happy she bought me this diary because it rocks, and I have lost my other one, and I promise to write soon, and I'm going to sleep. Love, Emily. Poetry is always popular at Grown Ups Read Things They Wrote as Kids, and our next reader, Jonathan, brought a poem he wrote as a teenager with some important backstory. This is a poem he wrote to his first boyfriend. But before Jonathan could give this poem to his boyfriend, he accidentally left it on the school bus. His brother found it outed Jonathan to his family by giving the poem to his mother written at 15 years old. We're going to hear this poem right now. Welcome, Jonathan, to our stage. Hello. There's some other stuff on the note that I'll just read first. Grace, give this to Jackson, and please don't read it. Hey, Jackson, sorry about not getting a chance to talk to you today. I had a lot to say. Smiley face. Um, this is the poem I wrote. The note I wrote earlier went through the wash. No joke. Sad face. (laughs) I'll write one today if I get the chance. See you tomorrow. Okay. It says, for Jackson, and there's a big arrow pointing to the note. (laughs) (laughs) Romeo and Romeo. The things they know, the places they'll go. Now they may be low but someday they'll glow, and their love they will show. Juliet is not seen here, or anywhere near, the same with their fear. Two boys, side by side, with nothing to hide. Romeo, oh Romeo, thou art my Romeo. Jonathan. (laughs) Thank you. After the show, Jonathan told me what happened after his brother shared that poem with his family. Unfortunately, it didn't actually, my family didn't have the most positive reaction to the poem at the time, but they have since come around and are very supportive of whoever I choose to love. Um, and actually, a few weeks after sharing the poem in Toronto with everyone, I was finally able to confront my mom about how she reacted to it. We had a nice talk as adults about what I was going through at the time. And yeah, having the chance to share the poem prior to that was definitely helpful um if i go back in time and talk to 15 year old jonathan i would probably tell him to hang in there um you're gonna have your heart broken a few times fighting for what you love but keep being proud of your big heart and everyone you choose to love and keep being romantic that's one of the things that makes you very special Next up, we're going to hear a little bit of fiction. Rachel is going to share an abridged version of her first full attempt at writing a novel. This was written somewhere between the ages of 6 and 10. We're not entirely sure. And just before the show, I asked Rachel 
does your attempt at a novel have a title? And she said, yes, it does. I said, what's the title? She said, it's called Tommy Soap's Crush. Please welcome Rachel to the Grown Ups Read Things They Wrote as Kids stage. Chapter one, the new girl. Today we have a new student, Ashley Bubblegum, said Mrs. Candies, Tommy S., and Tommy L.'s second grade teacher. Please come up and tell us about yourself, Mrs. Candies said. My name is Ashley Bubblegum. I'm six years old. I used to live in gum, Ashley said shyly. <laughs> Boy, she sure is pretty, Tommy S. thought. Tommy S. and Tommy L. were twins. They were, <laughs> they were both seven years old. <clears throat> Tommy S. had a crush on Ashley right when she came to his class. <laughs> Chapter two, Valentine's Day morning. Beep, beep, went Tommy S.'s clock. It was Valentine's Day. Tommy was excited until he remembered the extra card he gave Ashley. It was supposed to say, roses are red, violets are blue, daisies are pretty, and so are you. Love your secret admirer. But the card that he was going to give her looked like this. Dear secret admirer, violets are red, roses are blue, you are pretty, and so are daisies. Love, Ashley. (laughs) Chapter three, the big party. The the first thing they did at the party was eat. I'm going to put cookies in my punch, shouted Tommy L. (laughs) Everyone except for Ashley groaned. Ashley giggled. Then Tommy L. ate his horrible, disgusting, putrid-and-gross drink. (laughs) A few minutes later, he choked. I'm going to die, Tommy L. stupidly said. Not like we care, said a girl named Jane. (laughs) After that, Tommy L. puked. (laughs) After everybody ate and the puke was clean, they passed out valentines and opened them. When Ashley opened the extra one Tommy S. gave her, she giggled and said, I wonder which sweet boy gave this to me. Then Tommy L. opened his card from Ashley. Tommy L. (laughs) The card said she liked him ever since she came to the school. She thought Tommy S. was nice, but too normal. (laughs) Chapter 4, The Letter. Twerps, there's a letter from your girlfriend, said their 13-year-old sister, Mika. Ashley, both twins exclaimed. They raced toward Mika and wrestled for the letter. Tommy L. opened it. It said, Dear Tommy, your brother is crazy. I can tell he's the one who sent me the crazy valentine. Love ya, XOXO Ashley. (laughs) She's right, you are crazy, said Tommy L. No, she was talking about you, replied Tommy S., Guys, sorry to say this, but the envelope says Tommy L, said their sister. Then Tommy S ran to his room, he and Tommy L shared, and cried. I hate Tommy L. I may be crazy, but he's stupid. (laughs) He cried a little longer, then he got an idea. The twins were eating some popcorn and watching a movie when Tommy L got another letter. It said Ashley hated Tommy L. Tommy L was shocked, but he didn't cry. Ashley is so dead, cried Tommy L. I hate her so bad. Tommy S. shook his head. Tommy is stupid and crazy and gullible, thought Tommy S. But that's a good thing. He fell for my trick. (laughs) Chapter 5. What? (laughs) The next day at school, Tommy L. ran up to Ashley. Hi, she said. Ashley expected Tommy L. to say hi back, but he didn't. Instead, he kicked her and said, you're mean. Ashley was shocked, but she told the teacher anyway. And then she approached Tommy L and said, You know what, Tommy? I hate you too. I know, said Tommy. You don't need to tell me twice. Ashley scowled. I only told you once. You told me twice. (laughs) Oh, yeah? When? Tommy L showed Ashley the letter and explained what happened. She was too shocked to speak. Finally, she said, I didn't write that. Chapter 6, The Total Truth. Um, It was Tommy S., said Tommy L. That's what I thought, said Jane. (laughs) Let's go get him, exclaimed Ashley. They stormed over to Tommy S. Tell us why you told Tommy L. I hated him, said Ashley. I don't know what you're talking about, said Tommy S. 
Yes, you do, said Tommy L. <laughs> Tommy S. stared. Then he confessed he was in love with Ashley and was jealous of Tommy because he thought they were in love. Boys are so weird, said Ashley. Why would we be in love? Tommy S., you're mean and crazy. I know, and I'm sorry, said Tommy S. I forgive you, replied Tommy L. The end. Thank you. <laughs> The two Tommy's personalities were so distinct. <laughs> wow. When I was in school, it seemed like every single year our English teacher would assign an autobiography project. And so, year after year, at the ripe old age of 10 or 11 or maybe 12, I would write the story of my life for school. And it turns out I was not alone. When Nat was in seventh grade, her class wrote autobiographies for English class. And at her Toronto show, she shared hers on stage. My autobiography by me. <laughs> me! <laughs> I was always a happy baby. I always looked good in hats, and I hated it when it was real hot, just like now. I was born on December 15, 1978, at Toronto General Hospital at 12.03 a.m. My favorite food was ice cream. What I like to do. I like to play baseball, basketball, in brackets, shooting baskets, and volleyball. I like to go ski. When I was younger, I hated to play sports, but my, but my interests have changed. I'm always dieting. During the no summer of 91, I lost 13 pounds just by exercising and eating well. I am me, in parentheses, present. I am a very sensitive person that has feelings for other people. I like to play baseball or softball, explore life, and daydream. My weakness is that I let people really get to me easily, and that should change. I believe that one day the whole world is going to collapse because all of the greediness and the way people abuse the world. <laughs> we treat it like a dump. But unfortunately, I'm just a kid that can't say anything. I wish older people would listen to kids too, because most probably we have better ideas. We're not dumb. <laughs> My French and American cousins. I like my cousins a lot, especially my oldest one, Clark. I can't really tell if I like my cousins, Brian and David, because I haven't seen them in six years. <laughs> I have grandparents that live in the United States and France. I love all my grandparents, especially my grandmother who comes from France. She tells me stories about when she was young, and we take long walks together in the park. Feelings, nothing more than feelings. <laughs> Happiness is riding a horse in an open meadow, even if you don't know how to ride. <laughs> Insecurity is a family that doesn't care for you. Anger is when somebody talks about horrifying things that happen in the outside world in fully descriptive sentences. Kindergarten and daycare. I don't remember kindergarten too much, but I do remember one kid in my class, and he was a real nerd. I didn't know how to tie his shoe, and I always had to do it for him. I remember daycare fairly well. I remember one time somebody pulled down my pants, and I was so embarrassed, and I remember when I broke a whole nail and was rushed to the hospital. When I was in preschool, I was shy. I would never let my mom and dad go when they'd leave. For Halloween, everybody had a plastic costume except for me. I wanted a plastic one so badly, but I didn't get one, so I didn't go out for trick-or-treating. The stupidest thing I've ever done. It was my 12th birthday party, and I ate eight pieces of pizza in a record of two minutes. <laughs> I thought I'd never eat pizza again in my life, but I do. I'll never forget that. My parents don't even know about it because they weren't in the kitchen at the time. <laughs> the worst part about it, though, is that I gained three pounds the next morning. <laughs> 
the happiest day of my life. It was my 13th birthday, a surprise birthday party organized by Dacha. What made it so memorable is that nobody had done that for me before, and it was organized by my best friend. She planned it well. That day, I thought everyone was going nuts because they told me to get lost. Fiona, Margaret, Dacha, and Alexandra were all at the party. We had a wonderful cake that Dacha's mom baked, carrot cake. We rented the movie Ghost, and we had a sleepover. For that birthday, I got a big present that was bought from all of them. It was an official Blue Jays jersey with my favorite player at the time, um, John Olerud, with the number nine. I'll never forget that day for the rest of my life. Thank you. At the beginning of the show, we heard from Natalie. She's the one who pledged not to poke sharp sticks in her own eyes. And that was not the only thing Natalie shared at our Toronto show. She also brought along a piece of schoolwork from grade four. The assignment was to write an essay explaining... If you could be any famous person, what famous person would you be and why? Please welcome back to the Grown Ups Read Things They Wrote as Kids stage, Natalie. If I could be any famous person, then I would probably be Jennifer Lopez. (laughs) Because she has an awesome life. (laughs) She has already starred in at least three movies. My favorite was Made in Manhattan. In that movie, Jennifer Lopez gets to play a maid. (laughs) I'd like to star in a movie as well, get into all my costumes, get my face so covered in makeup you don't even know who I am, (laughs) and amaze critics by giving them a five-star performance. (laughs) Jennifer Lopez is also a singer, and I have her CDs. That's another thing I would like to do, to have all my CDs up on a shelf for people to buy. She may not be my favorite singer, but I like to listen to her music now and then because it cheers me up. (laughs) She has pretty good songs, and her videos are cool. Another reason I picked Jennifer Lopez to write about is that she gets to do music videos since she is a singer. That would be really fun to do a music video. You get pampered and treated like a newborn baby. (laughs) In brackets, well, they just do everything for you. (laughs) Also, another reason why I would like to be her is that she has a lot of money. (laughs) I know that money can't buy you happiness, and that money isn't life, and that you should be greedy. But if you had a choice between $80,000 a year and $150 million a year... (laughs) ...then I think you would choose $150 million a year, too. She is very pretty, and her clothes are really nice. Jennifer Lopez lives in a mansion. I think that her life is a beautiful dream life, and I think that everyone would choose to be her, wouldn't you? (laughs) People like me actually want to be Jennifer Lopez. (laughs) And that's what is probably the best part about being famous, being a role model for somebody else you don't even know. Thank you. What was your frame of reference for music video shoots? (laughs) So great. That has been Grown Ups Read Things They Wrote as Kids Toronto. Huge round of applause for everybody who read tonight. So, so, so good. Thank you for coming to listen. Thank you to Su Hong for doing sound and to Colin for doing projection and Jack and everybody here at the Royal. Thank you to Leanne at the door. Thank you to my wife, Jenna. Thank you to me, Dan Meisner. Stick around. Say hello. Get home safe. Dig up your own kid writing. We'll see you soon, Toronto. Bye.
if you really don't want to stretch your own time a bit, then why did you have children? (laughs) 